how about that? That was a absolute blowout for West Virginia. They beat the Oklahoma Sooners 93 to 61. They improved to 14 and 9 on the season and 3 and 7 in Big 12 conference play. A look at the numbers real quick. Uh, Eric Stevenson, yeah, um, I think he's still making shots as we're speaking. Uh, 34 points on the on the night, six of 11 from three point range. He also had six rebounds. Keedy Johnson, 16 points, did a really good job finishing around the rim. Uh, and then Grant, Grant Sherfield, the leading scorer for Oklahoma, was 16 points on four of nine from three, six of 13 from the field. And the, really the, the big one, the, the one big team stat I want to look at in, in this one for West Virginia is the free throw shooting. It's been a problem all year long for West Virginia. These last few games are starting to improve a little bit. 24 of 31 from the charity stripe tonight. So, Chris, I don't, I don't know what to talk about. I mean, this is like a completely different or foreign thing for us. I mean, we're not used to having to see or talk about a blowout win in conference play. Um, that was – without a doubt, the best game they've, they've played all year. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, the one thing we can look at, you know, the, the energy they started with, um, that helps when Stevenson hits a couple uh, you know, I don't know, a few shots there for that 10-2 run. Uh, eight of those points were his, but, you know, West Virginia, uh, I think it was Oklahoma called a timeout, or just went under the, the four-minute mark in the timeout, and that's generally a point. I think we're going to live about 24 or something like that. And that's generally when teams would make a run on them, kind of switch that momentum going in the second half. And uh, they maintained that lead. I think they led about 26 going into uh, in the halftime. And then you kind of had that fear again, okay, how are they going to start the second half? They've, they've come out sluggish all the time, like all year, second half. Allowed teams to get back in it when they've had big leads. Uh, and, you know, Oklahoma got it down to 20, and that was it. Uh, they went on a 10 run, put it up over 30, uh, and that was it. That was a ball game. Uh, they talked about, you know, putting the foot on the neck and just beating teams, making sure you beat teams, and they definitely did that tonight. That's something that's been talked about all year, and they did it tonight. Yeah, I think the key in this one early on was Tanner Groves getting that second foul within, like, the first two minutes of the game. That completely changed what the Sooners wanted to do but you also got to give a tip of the hat to West Virginia's pick because Jimmy Bell, no, he didn't have his, you know, typical night. But, I mean, you, you're talking about really good showings from Mo Wagee. James Aconco gets his first double-double. I thought those two were really good off the bench. Yeah, Jimmy's getting a lot more attention, too, obviously. I think the last time he had double figures was not long ago. Um, he hit 15 and, I think, seven, seven or eight points. So, he's capable of dominating the paint, but he is getting a lot of attention. And one of his weaknesses right now is passing out of a double team when the double team gets to it. Um, that was something Derek Colbert got really good at uh, over his time here. And it's something that you know, Jimmy does moving forward. Uh, but he, he has gotten better at recognizing the double team coming and getting the ball out. So I, you're seeing improvement there. And James is just playing with so much confidence right now. He's, he's had the athleticism. He's had the hops. He's had a lot of the, the tools to be successful. But you can slowly see him starting to get it, playing a little freer. That definitely simplified things for him. But you can just see it's all starting to click for him, and he's just playing basketball. Speaking of James Aconquo, if they can get that type of production out of him, and really Mobile Geek too, I guess you could throw him in there too. If they can get that type of production on a, on a consistent basis, I mean, that's something we talked about before we started recording was this team's just wildly inconsistent. If they can get that consistently, how much better can this team be down the stretch? Yeah, looking for consistency and energy, effort, especially on the defensive end. You don't need Stevenson to go out and score 34 points right. every night. I mean, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't necessarily need him to go out and shoot 46, 48% from the field every night. But which, but what will translate to that is good energy on defense, focus on defense, communication on defense, and it'll lead to easier baskets when you are struggling, struggling to score. And that happened with West Virginia in the, the second part of the first half when they started forcing turnovers and they went like on a 23 to 24 to 3 run or something crazy like that and really blew the game open. Uh, if you're constantly pushing, constantly grinding, because it kind of cooled off there once Stevenson, um, I think it was 15 12, and then that's really when they made a push. It, it, started, it started from the defense. So even when things aren't falling, you can make things happen with an offensive rebound, a defensive rebound, and a kick out. Just keep fighting, keep playing. And that's something that if, that if they can do that consistently, then you can see more wins in the future. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think the defense was terrific all night. They were disruptive. Uh, they rotated well. They just got a lot of hands on the ball, uh, really from start to finish. You got to you got to give them credit for that. I, I do want to ask you this. I know it's it's a kind of looking way down the line, but is this where we can look back and say this is where the season turned? Do you feel like this is that type of game? We've seen too much inconsistency. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma hasn't played well. Uh, you mentioned Groves getting in early foul trouble. Um, it, it's, you know, this, this league's too tough. Oklahoma's allowed to have a bad night like that. Teams are going to have bad nights where it kind of snows balls. We've seen it happen yep. in West Virginia. So you, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Let's see if they can string together some wins. Because Iowa State is really good from around the perimeter. It's an area West Virginia struggled. They've gotten better. Uh, but they haven't faced a team like this in a while since I think Kansas, if I want to remember correctly, that's this that's just good of a three-point shooting team. So uh, perimeter is going to be definitely a uh, high priority for that defense. So there you have it. West Virginia 93-61 to 61 over Oklahoma. They'll be back at it on Wednesday night in the WVU Coliseum at 7 o'clock on ESPN2, hosting number 13 Iowa State. And following that one, we'll have the Mountaineers Now postgame show once again, so for Chris, I'm Scott Callahan. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube at Mountaineers Now and follow us on Twitter at Mountaineers Now as well. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys Wednesday night.